Hello guys and welcome to this afternoon interesting I would say webinar because in this um, series we will learn more about trading behavior if you like about trading psychology about um, why do we see this uh, type of market formation that we see and uh, how can we explain it and how can we use it into our advantage as retail traders so first and foremost allow me to uh, welcome the people they they attended for first time here it's uh, our uh, our pleasure actually to have you uh, on this webinar and also for those who want to record we're going to hear it and watch it uh, when it's going to be uploaded on youtube i hope you're going to find it very valuable and it's going to add uh, a lot of uh, information into your trading so before we start just to make sure we all understand that this uh, this uh, content it's for general information only and it's not intended to provide trading or investment advice or personal recommendations and thank you for understanding it now what's there today title it's trading psychology as i already said in this uh, series of webinars and we're going to talk about two powerful trading uh, patterns the candlestick name engulfing and the pin bars um, and and basically why they have such a predictable uh, high probable outcome as we uh, as we we experience and um, we're going to see pretty much everything around these two strong trading uh, patterns just few words about uh, about admirals about our uh, brokerage firm for those who don't know us yet we are a forex and cfd uh, company we offer more than 8000 financial instruments we have uh, support with tens and tens of uh, of countries in different languages uh, we hold license in many uh, serious and uh, high regulated uh, countries like the australia the asic the um, uk fca estonia cyprus and we have south africa now we are getting into canadian and so on and so forth our spreads we usually try to keep them as minimal as possible so for your own best interest and especially for intraday uh, traders guys the 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 minimum the spread the best is for you and excuse me constantly i just drink some water because i talk too much and uh, it will be nice if you could talk as well because these webinars that you don't talk and i don't see you as well it's a bit um i want to make sure they are not boring for you so if you need anything guys uh or the questions please make sure you type them on the chat box below and it will be a pleasure to answer everything and please make sure to keep it trading related okay <laughs> then the trading products we offer you can access them through mainly through metatrader platforms the four and five but also uh, lately i use the mobile application i will just show you in a while now for those again who don't know it we have uh, the trading podcast every monday i do record the major news events and i explain them what a trader and investor can anticipate out of these events and it will be a great tool and to be consistent with this every monday we upload the podcast on the website let me share with you the link so if you click on the link you can uh, find the you can find the episode you can just download it directly to your smartphone will be much easier for you okay and if you have any feedback 
guys about whatever we do, please make sure at the end of the webinar, you can have the time to just leave your feedback for things you like or for things you, who you believe we can improve or for things you would like to see in the future. Okay, so just um, uh, because it's very related to, to the trading, if you were to hear the podcast or if you're going to hear them now, you, you're going you're gonna to listen to them now, you're going to understand that uh, there are a few major events in the upcoming days. They can bring such as volatility in the market. So you can protect your trades if you are an intraday trader. And uh, at these times, you can understand that the market can just, let's say if your market is in an uptrend, it can just slap down and then keep to the predominant direction. So if we are an intraday traders right at that uh, moment and our entry and stop loss, it's close to... Uh, to the current price, then we have high probabilities to be shaked out, regardless if our direction is right. Correct. So uh, during high volatile events, like the interest rate decisions we're going to have in the upcoming days, uh, it's it's better if we just uh, manage our risk accordingly. So by listening to the podcast, you're going to have a great idea of what's going on in the markets for the week. Also, the native mobile application, uh, you can download it from the App Store, from the Google Play. That's where you can also place your trades. I use them a lot on my investing strategy. Uh, it's brilliant. It's easy, simple, and uh, very, very uh, time effective. So I highly recommend you, even if you are just trading, you can monitor your trades from here. You can uh, initiate trades, close trades, whatever. You can do everything from here. Next, we have the uh, the Instagram account. If you don't know it yet, please make sure you down you mm, follow us on Instagram. Just excuse me, guys. Let me find the link so I can share it with you. So here is the link for the Instagram account. We put lots of reels there, so it's a great uh, it's a great page to to have. And also, the next one is the YouTube channel. That's where everything goes. Uh, the recording webinars. So please, please make sure you like and if you like the videos, just press the like button. You can subscribe to the YouTube. You activate the notification button so you never miss any upload we do also uh, on a monday to friday i do live trading webinars from 7 30 a.m to 8 a.m gmt time so if you have the time you can participate and get lots and lots of valuable information now who is this guy in front of the screen who talked to us with uh, and we understand he is not english native language for those who don't know me yet, my name is Theo. Uh, I'm an experienced uh, investor and trader. I hold a master in physics. When it comes to investing, I love the stock, uh, the tech stocks and the automotive stocks. So that's where mainly my portfolio is focusing. And also when I'm trading, I use swing trading for my advantage, to my advantage. And I do intraday trading, especially uh, right now, we have the webinars, the live trading sessions every morning. So uh, it's a good opportunity right before the London Open to do some intraday trading. And here at Admirals, I'm investing and in trading at Ducado. Okay, so I have lots of webinars. So on, you can see me on the social media with Admirals. We put a lot of effort to bring the content out to you. So I will appreciate if you... Uh, use the content for your advantage, guys. Okay, remember, what do we do here? It's for you. It's not for myself. I know this stuff. I trade. I use them. So I just make sure you're going to get the, a significant amount of value out of all these webinars. Okay. So enough, Theo. We feel a bit bored by your talking. Give us the lesson what's for today today we're going to see the anatomy of the pin bar and the engulfing before by just saying what 
do we, what's happening within the pin bar and within the engulfing candles without explaining properly what are they and what implications they have, it's going to be hard for everyone to associate with the, the results they give and to trust their credibility in the market. Then we will see uh, how traders behave, what do they believe and how do they think around the key levels. And it's a bit of misunderstanding or misinterpretation about key levels when it comes to key levels. Traders, they think, especially people, they start trading now, they have the tendency to think that key levels are just some lines they appear in the charts or they can be drawn in the charts and then price is just fluctuated uh, above, below or within. And that's not the case. The key levels, they appear from price action patterns. So if I have some candlestick here or a bar chart and the market is doing like this, then when I find two points, I can draw a straight line or a diagonal line. I need minimum two points in, in maths to draw a line. You, we know that we need minimum two points, okay, two areas. So it's the price action that creates these levels. Now, which price action creates the strongest level? Most likely are the engulfings and the pin bars. All right, I hope, guys, you get it. You understand this one. Then we will uh, definitely, everything is blend together and then we will go through the psychology behind them. And why we're going to do that? Because if we understand the psychology behind the market price action, we understand how traders think and we are part of traders. We are the traders. So you will understand how other people think and you will feel much more confident when it comes to trading execution and to stick with your plan all right guys any questions so far please make sure you you ask me here if you if you want if you if you feel okay at the list can you type uh, in which country you located and what's your trading um, style maybe or if you are trading for a while for how long you are trading just a few words so uh, I know who are on this webinar today. That will be great. They're not going to be used for any uh, purposes. It's purely just to have a bit of um, interaction with this webinar. Okay. So what did we learn from the previous webinar? The previous webinar, we start talking about the, the root of trading. So about how we start as traders and we start trading with the trend, right? Hi, Hasmir, South Africa, day trading, eight months. Well done, well done. And thank you so much for your, for your answer. So in Belgium, pit trading for about a year. Wow, that's, that's great, fantastic. So what we what we try to what i try to to explain you at first is to get an idea how do we how do we express ourselves when it comes to trading and if you haven't had the chance the opportunity to watch the last one i will just quickly go through so what do we see here here we see some lines, forget that you are a trader now, okay? Let's say you never trade before and you just see the first chart in front of you and this is line, it goes up, then it goes down, then it goes up, then it goes down, then it goes up and then it goes down and so on and so forth. Does this mean anything to you guys? Can you, if you can, you can uh, answer the questions, by the way, feel free, that's your webinar, so you can feel free to type on the chat box below. So does this mean anything to someone who for first time see this, these lines here? Impulse, retracement, impulse, retracement, and so on. I assume that 
to none of us it means anything here. It means absolutely nothing. Okay. Maybe nothing, right? But a price move means nothing to us until it will be time to participate in the activity. So until the time we will initiate a position, we open a trade, this scenario here oh, means nothing to your agree. So let's go to the next one. What did we say? We, we, we explain this scenario here that now two traders, they enter the market. The one trader is uh, bullish, is buying and the other trader is selling in this particular scenario. And what did we say? The first occasion is the traders who see the market is just making higher highs. The candles here, they are making higher highs. At some point, for a reason, valid, invalid, known, unknown, correct or right, there is no such a thing like what I just mentioned in the trading. For any reason, a trader decided to initiate to open a sell position right at this b1 area right at this top that trader feels great when it sees this decline on the price then at a1 for a valid invalid correct right wrong whatever whatever is the reason this trader here at A1 decided to initiate a buy position. Both traders, they find themselves at this marked area here in a winning trade. Guys, this is very important. This trader here who sell at B1 and this trader here who bought at A1 they are both in a winning trade right here. But what are the emotions of these two traders? The first trader who sold at B1 is feeling enormous amount of frustration because he could close the trade or she could close the trade here, but now he's losing from the profit. He doesn't losing from his account. It's not in minus, it's in a plus, but it feels frustration. Does anyone resonate with this example? So why is that? Because it didn't close the trade here. But why to close here? Obviously, he didn't know or she didn't know that this is the last point. The market could be traded right here, right at day one. Correct. So why to close the trade? There is no reason. But the emotion here is frustration. We're going to explain more and more when we go down the track. So the trader at A1 here feels enormous amount of happiness, right? Then as the price comes higher and higher and higher, this trader here feels frustration more and more and more. At some point around here, he cannot keep up with seeing his profits uh, flying out of, uh, of his pocket. And at this point here, he decided to close the trade, to be break even. This guy here, at this point here, he's so excited because he see his money uh, becoming more and more and more in his pocket. And when the price come to this area here, and at B2, he sees that the market is declining, this a1 trader is start getting panic because he sees the market taking out his profit and he thinks that the downtrend started but why is that because he thinks that this move is over now because it's overextended and the market it's going to push to the downside and create a new trend a new down, a, a new downtrend so how is he behaving? He starts feeling the same emotions like this guy here because his profits are getting, uh, are getting away from him. And at some point here, he said, I have enough. 
and he closed the trade on profit, but under what emotions? Sadness, upset, frustration. So two traders with opposite trading activities, both in profit, they experience similar emotions. They experience frustration and they experience um, uh, that they, they, they feel upset. Instead of, instead of the opposite, hey, you are in profit, well done, perfect. But why is that? Because we allow our expectations to take over and we want our expectations to meet and to meet our needs in the market. And in trading and investing, this doesn't happen. And because it doesn't happen, we get very, very, very upset. Okay, this is a, uh, keep that in mind, think about that, and we're gonna come back uh, because this psychology trading series, they are continuous lessons, okay? So the next one, we saw how, uh, the psychology behind the ranges. And we said that traders, they feel more secure and they feel more comfortable to trade ranges because they can see these markets, they are moving within some boundaries and they feel comfortable to buy the bottom and sell the top. All right. Again, and these are low probability trades are not high probability trades, but again, traders, they, they feel that way because they are needs they they match now in the markets they are needs that i want to see the price coming here to feel good uh on, in rangers in ranges many times they they come true all right so let's move on let's have a look at the anatomy of uh, the bullish engulfing bearish engulfing and what's behind them so First thing, a bullish engulfing candle is a two candlestick or bar chart candles pattern. It requires a red candle to be the, the low and the high of the red candle to be totally within the low and the high of the green candle. For those who have different colors on their charts, maybe you have uh, the bearish, you have them as black and the bullish, you have them as uh, white or blue or whatever colors. I will just use uh, this, these colors for the presentation because it's easier to be understandable for every trader. Okay, thank you for your understanding. So at some point, the low of uh, the red candle can be equal to the low of the green candle. And that's totally fine. It does, we don't say it's not a bullish engulfing. Uh, there are some times in the market, some uh, discretion need to be applied, okay? But if we see that the low of the red candle is lower than the low of the uh, green candle, it's not a bullish engulfing. Now, strongest implication is to trade it with a trend. Definitely, it considers reversal pattern because to be, uh, to be formed, this candle here, it opens and it closes here. This candle, usually it opens here it traded at some point at the low. Then within the same session, it goes here and it creates this high. And then it comes here and close. So when we see many traders, when they see that the, the green candle took out the low of the previous candle and we are in an uptrend, they just uh, getting ready for a breakout strategy and they place here above the high of the red candle, a buy stop order. And it's something I do it a lot. Okay, and we want to get filled with this push to the upside. Now, this 
indicates that buyers took control over the same session. And that's why it's one of the strongest price action uh, signals because it shows the shift in momentum from bearish to bullish. And it means when we see that within a, uh, a session, even if this session is the daily chart, so this is a representation of one day's activity or the four hour chart or the one hour chart, it's still very strong. And after this move happened, we expected to see, excuse me guys, we expected to see the next candle to be bullish and continue the push to the upside. It has a high probability uh, to give us a, a bullish move that we just said. And this can also be traded from uh, key levels, from hard levels, strong levels, of support okay we as a rule of thumb we don't trade let's say we are on resistance here we don't trade in general the uh, bullish candles from resistance onwards if the candle came here and here it was resistant from previous price action movement and we identify that we have a level of resistance either this candle should be, should broken when it came here if it had momentum should broken to the upside uh, or maybe it signaled the weekend the um, in the in the in this market okay in whatever instrument we are trading so what about the bearish engulfing candle it's exactly the opposite it's uh, it follows a green candle the green candle open here traded low at some point traded higher the uh, later within the session and it closed there so it closed here and this red candle opens here at some point traded high during the session it took the high it made higher high everybody thought that okay this market it's uh, created higher high so we're going to try to buy but within the same session the market reverses all the way down created a new low and close below the low of the previous candle. So it's a strong bearish engulfing. It has bearish implications and can be traded from key levels of resistance. And this one can be traded from key levels of support. Now, why traders, they get, why these are the strongest price action? First, what what we just said that a bullish and golfing candle means or how does a bullish and golfing candle uh, appears we said that the open was here at some point at some point within let's say that this is one day's candle this is the daily chart the market pushed to the downside and created the lower low if you go to, I would say an example of five minute chart, if you go to the five minute chart, you're gonna see this move to the downside like this, lower highs and lower lows. Whoever watches a chart and see that a price makes lower highs and lower lows, every person will understand that, hey, we have selling pressure, so we are ready to sell. And selling activity take place. At some point, the buyers, they say, we have enough with the selling. We believe that it's a good price to reverse the market now. And they start pushing the price higher. And how can we avoid to get caught in this environment when we are, let's say this is in an uptrend, we are coming from an uptrend. And I have some examples to show you. We can say to ourselves in an uptrend, I'm a buyer. So by locking to that thought and by sticking to this mentality that I only buy in an option and I don't attend to take the, the one winning trade when it's going to come to the downside, then and only then we have high probabilities. Uh, yes, it's that for all time frames. It's a very, very good question, very smart question. Is that for all time frames or is there a preference time frame to act on this pattern? 
And the answer is totally for all time frames. However, however, please note it down from my experience and interpretation with the markets. This and all the all the candlestick patterns. If you're gonna uh, trade candle by candle, the highest probability on a candlestick to perform the way you want it to perform, you're gonna find them on the daily charts and on the four hour charts. If you go below to the one hour chart, 15 minutes, five minutes, 30 minutes, one minute charts, they don't tend to have that, um, they have, put it that way, they give you more uh, false signals because of the volatility you can find on this, on this, on, on these lower time frames. So on the daily and four hour charts, of course on the weekly charts, but we don't trade the weekly charts. Uh, on the daily and four hour charts, they have the um, they have better probabilities of uh, of success. These these uh, patterns. Okay, so the traders they 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 believe that the market is moving down and they want to sell but at some point the buyers in an uptrend they say okay enough it's enough we want to resume the buying activity and they just push the price to the predominant direction and what's leaving behind it's leaving behind all these stop losses they were in the markets from people they sold and all these stop losses now they activated on the opposite side because when they close the sales the sell orders when they close they become uh, they close with buy orders that's what behind the the scenes let's say so it pushes the momentum to the upside then it takes the high and we see that buyers they just uh, buying this market on every dip on the lower time frames and we have this pattern up here so from the psychological perspective it's the, the belief of traders that this market, it's because it make a lower low, it's gonna to push to the downside, it gets diminishes. And we see that buyers, they just take control. And uh, that's what exactly happening behind these engulfing candles. The same and uh, possibly happens with the bearish engulfing candles. Let's say we are in a downtrend. And at this point here, we see green candles, green uh, let's say we have red candles here this downtrend and then we have green candles here for the retracement and people they start buying here and buying and they think that it's the end of this um, of this move but at any point the bearish engulfing can be up here right because at every time in a downtrend at every time the green candle it's uh, getting out of the previous high it's a potential bearish engulfing right like here we have the open the close then the open of this candle here it traded it took the high it made higher high like here it made higher high like here it made higher high and and the same the same people and more they get attracted to this new high and breakout traders they are expecting for the price to push to the upside more and more and more but the predominant market direction is to the downside obviously right so what do we see we just see a bearish engulfing formed and it takes the previous low as well and close lower and then it's just continue so what can, how can you position yourself so you don't get caught within these environments? Because trust me, it's the strongest price action signal based in my experience. It's 90% uh, of my trading activity is based on the on the engulfing candles, okay? And with a great ratio of uh, success. So the only way to, and, and when they appear, they give so much momentum and you can see it on, on your charts. If you go back to any charts, any time frame, just stick with the higher time frames, four hours and, and dailies and weekly charts, you're gonna see that this it's a good and reliable price action pattern. When it traded with a trend, 
or when you have a key level of support and then you find a bullish engulfing you can buy and a key level of resistance you find a bearish engulfing you can sell now let's talk about what's happening behind the pin bars and why they are important and what do they mean again we need to uh, sorry we don't need to that was my uh my mistake i shouldn't have these candles here but anyway let's use it on our advantage so let's say we are in an uptrend the market is pushing to the upside at some point we see this retracement and then this bearish candle appears few bearish candle and then the market at some point it traded lower and then it comes and close higher but with a different with a different mode we see that the body it's very small compared to the wick or the tail of the candle. And that shows that the, the sellers, the people who were selling here, they got rejected by the buyers. And the market, as it opens here and close here for this candle, then it opens here. At some point, it traded all the way here then it pushed up to this high and then it closed there that was the close so opens here close there leaving this tail behind it's a very strong signal for buys uh, but here it's where traders they get wrong they get it wrong and unfortunately they experience a lot of uh, losing trades within that and i will just tell you in a sec Let's have a look at the bearish pin bar, the same, but on the opposite side. Let's say we are coming in a downtrend. Buyers, they step in for this retracement. Here is a downtrend. So at this stage, we see this market uh, trying to push to the upside and then it's get rejected. And at some point, the body, wherever the body can appear, it can appear right there. It can appear here depends where it's going to be the the uh, the open okay so the point here is that the market left behind this tail so what happened to these traders these traders they had the belief that the market is pushing to the upside and they were buying and buying and buying but during the same session the market rejected all these buying prices and it traded way lower and it, sh and it closed with that small body. Now, the color of the body in both occasions and the color of the tail, it's irrelevant. That's not how the pin bar examine it. The color can be, uh, can be um, red here, can be green here. Guys, this doesn't matter. What matters is what happened to the traders, to their beliefs and to their activities, what happened and the market as it uh, opens there, oh, sorry, as it uh, opens there, it closed there, that should be lower anyway. So the market just got rejected on these prices here and we had this tail behind. That's the representation of all this trading volume that happened here by the market participants when they were selling. It got exhausted by the buyers and they left behind with this body. So again, if the tail had red color, it's, it's irrelevant really because we want to see where the momentum is going and definitely here we can see that the momentum is most likely going to the upside let's have a look at some example let me see any other question guys everything clear so far do you have any question so this is a chart i took um, which currency pair that was from the euro us dollar Okay, so that's from the euro. Let me write it here for you. That's euro USD on the daily chart. 
what do we see here? We see the market in a downtrend. At some point, it trying to create this retracement. And do you see that this red candle left this tail here? This blue, this uh, bullish candle and this bearish candle, they left this type, these tails at the same area here. This candle here left tail at the same area. So this is as the rejections. Now, a bullish candle, the next session here, try to break out of this area here. But here it's where the traders, they got trapped. Many traders, they, they believed at that stage that this market is in an uptrend. And what did they experience? They experienced this move. The market opened greater higher high. Do we all see this higher high? I hope everyone can see this high is higher than this high. So we have a higher high. And then by the end of the day, it closes below the previous low. So all the buying pressure, all the buying momentum came from the day below because this is a daily chart. It got exhausted. It got totally destroyed by the sellers. Now, there are two entries within this candle. The first entry is we enter right at the break of the previous candle here. Why we do that? Because first we see that the market made a higher high. Now on the push to the downside, we can have a, a sell stop order. And to expect to get filled and move with the predominant trend. So all this, all this, this, this key level here that created by this price action, in all scenarios, in all cases, okay, here it doesn't touch it, but in all cases here, it shows that they were opinions from sellers that this market, it's a downtrending market. We don't have any break of structure. So why to allow to the buyers to take control? They wanted to keep and resume their bearish activity. Okay. So how do these people feel now? So the first traders, they open here, they close there. So they had a buy order here. They have a stop loss here. And then when the market made this bearish and goffing, they still couldn't accept that they were, let's put it differently, they were so focused on their fears not to lose money that they couldn't see and reevaluate their trading plan that this it's a false signal now because this is a downtrend, the breakout didn't occur. So better to just take our small loss and get out of the way and change direction, change bias and be sellers with the trend. Instead of that, what they simply did, they were waiting. Some other traders, when the market was coming towards the end of their stop loss, they were hoping that the market they will retrace back to the upside and they were adding positions, adding money, initiating more positions if you prefer. And they were buying on these dips with the hope that the market can reverse. That's how traders feel. And uh, I hope now what we said at the early beginning and what we explain about the engulfing candles, now you can see it and now you can put the puzzle together. All right, then the market is just pushing to the downside. And what do we see here? We see a bullish candle. All right, some traders, they attended, they, are, they think that this 
market here, it came to a support. And from support, necessarily the market will just create a new high. That's not how the trading works. And if traders could understand this, we wouldn't have these flashes uh, so often. These flashes are happening because the only way for a market to make a higher high is by traders believe that this market is in an uptrend and they buy it. If you are watching this on the five minute chart or on the one minute chart and you don't, uh, and, and the traders don't make the effort to go to the daily chart to see the predominant direction and to understand how these trading patterns appear, then they're going to have hard times to get their mindset right and to keep their psychology in, an, uh, in a healthy trading environment. All right. Then we move on. And what do we see here? The market stopped adding volume to the downside within this candle, as you can see. Then the buyers, they stepped in aggressively. You can see how long is the body compared, this body compared to the two, three bodies previously. It means it has a lot of trading volume on the, on, to the upside. And at some point, the market opened here like it should open, correct? It start trading higher. Everyone see higher prices, higher prices on the euro, higher prices. The market even comes here and they see that it takes this high and everyone is trying to buy and buy and buy and they see only, uh, they, 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 in their mind, they see something is not existing here, an uptrend. And the reason they see an uptrend, it's because most of the times they feel regret that they didn't get involved with the downtrend. And they think that now it's the end. Can you, under, can you focus on the words I'm using? I say always, they think, they feel, they feel, they want to feel, they don't want to feel. It's only about their emotions. The way they take this type of trading activity is because of their feelings, not because of what they see as the market information, not what they let the market shows them. They just believe, they see what they want to see exactly, guy. That's definitely, they see what they want to see. That's so true. Instead of stay, um, stay, on the, on, stay at the back a little bit and observe the market as it is without thinking, I want to buy a new car. I want this. I would like that. I want my friends and family to applaud me because I told them I'm going to be a trader and they were saying different things. It's most 90% of the time, unfortunately, the traders, they get stuffed uh, within the markets, not because they, not necessarily because of lack of known age, but purely because of lack of uh, emotional management on psychological uh, misbehavior. So why this pin bar up here, the bearish pin bar up here? Because all these people here, they think, again, they think that this is a beginning of an uptrend because they see this candle here. So they totally, they become blind, totally blind to, uh, to see this picture of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It's three trading weeks of activity here. And they can't see it in terms of uh, how the market works. They just believe that this is going to be a beginning of a new uptrend. Why? Because they didn't get involved with the downtrend most of the times. And they think that they missed out on the opportunities. So at, ev at every um, bullish candle they're going to see in front of them, 
they gonna uh, they will experience it as a new uptrend so they start buying but the market is in a downtrend the sellers they have their orders here they are there and they start selling 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 and we see this bearish pin bar now how do this trader feel they feel betrayed what do they do they start buying from here more and more and more what do they do after their stop loss get uh, get out sometimes before their stop loss get out they just trying to push their stop loss more further more down they are totally uh, occupied by the emotions of frustration and the emotions of uh, they are upset they don't even see that they have to close their position immediately and open position to the downside to be within the momentum instead of trying to uh, to work the trades out unfortunately many traders they are fighting their positions they are fighting within themselves they get upset because the market because uh, everything else except of their observation in the market unfortunately that's what happening and it caused a lot of traders frustration so how can we avoid this and write this down we learn to trade with market cycles first so we make sure market cycles it's the lower highs and lower lows in a downtrend and higher highs and higher lows in an uptrend so we make sure we are confident to sell on retracements in a downtrend and to buy on retracements in an uptrend so if we install this new belief into our mindset when we are trading we will never perceive from now on any retracements as something happening against us and we're going to just experience it as something it's normal to happen in the market and when we see these retracements we're going to be ready to take advantage of these uh, pullbacks so we can find some nice catalyst like the bearish engulfing or the bearish pin bar and go with that the same applies to the uptrend so this uh this taken uh, was it from the same pair or the the eurozy maybe daily chart again i think it was the eurozy if it if it wasn't the eurozy definitely it's uh, the the euro us dollar so what do we see we see this support here created by this high and this high then the market break to the upside and then it retraced back so we see this bullish engulfing candlestick pattern here. So this bullish engulfing, the market close there. The next candle opens there, traded lower than this low, and it took the high and close higher than the previous um, uh, the previous open of the red candle. So what can we expect it to happen after that of course to see the market pushing to the upside now we come to this uh, to this area there are two things are happening here the first with the with this bearish candle here many traders who didn't participate in this market they are feeling so much of uh, frustration and regret that they missed out and when they see this price formation here they say oh that's our opportunity the market now it's going to start the downtrend and it's going to go all the way down it's going to take the low it's going to make us rich we're going to go to buy a car we're going to go to buy a house we're going to go to buy a horse we're going to go to and they start thinking only what they want from their life and they expect it to find it, ladies and gentlemen, in the markets. So the technical analysis is getting so, so out of the way. 
they don't have the mindset, the right mindset to ex to express this move here um, and to explain this move to themselves that this is the beginning of a retracement and they start selling. What happens? The buyers, because obviously they are very aggressive, we see this uptrend, the, at, the, at the next candle, they put this rejection here and that's a pin bar. Regardless of the color, a rejection like this with a long tail and a small body, it calls pin bar. So it's a bullish pin bar. It doesn't mean that it has to be colored in, in uh, green to be bullish. So we have two traders here. We have the trader, remember, at B1 and at A1. So this trader here, in reality, it opens sell position. And when the trader see this price, price action, he doesn't close the position because he's trying to convince himself that this is the beginning of a downturn and the market is just paused. But for a trader who is long, this one here is the beginning of a new buying position, right? Because if you put 100 people in front of this chart and you ask them, let's say we don't see this, uh, how do I hide it? Okay. Let's say we don't see this information here. Please answer me to that question. You put a hundred people in front of this chart and ask him, is it an uptrend question mark? Is it a downtrend or is it a sideways? Or you don't know, you don't know. That's the fourth answer. What do you think? If you put a hundred people there, what's most likely you're going you're gonna to receive as answer? That this is an option, right? That this market is just moving higher. We see that by the time passing, this market is just moving to the upside. Then they start buying. This trader here feels betrayed. It's feeling so, so bad. It starts selling more. It's losing more. When the market comes here and it pushed and it put this, uh, this price action pattern here, it thinks that's oh, okay, the market paused for a while. It gives him the opportunity to get out of the position if he hasn't done it yet. But no, insist here, it refuses to see that this market is clearly in an uptrend because of the needs the trader wants to fulfill and is trying to get it from the market. Now, you're going to ask me, okay, Theo, if we don't have goals, why to trade? Best, perfect question. We do have goals, and that's I'm going to do you another trading, another webinar about that. In trading, uh, coming from a background as an active and in a professional environment working at some stage, uh, I'm telling you many successful traders, they have goals like how good I execute my plan, how accurate I was with my timing, how accurate it was with my money management, because the only thing you can control in trading and investing is how much money you're going to lose if something doesn't work in your favor. How much money you're going to make, you don't know it. You estimate it, but you don't know it. So you cannot have a measurable um, indication to work accurately in your favor. The only thing you can, uh, you can control is if I enter here, if I enter here long, if I buy here, if I have a stop here, how much money I will lose if this move doesn't happen to the upside and something strange happen and the market reverse and take my stop? How much money I'm going to lose? Five dollars, fifty dollars, a hundred, two hundred, a thousand, ten thousand? How much? That's the only thing I can uh, I can be sure about that because we have good liquidity. Let's say nowadays, so you not you don't have high risk for gaps and all this stuff to not fill you within the trades okay these just exemptions so uh, that's that's really what's what traders see unfortunately in many occasions they see what they want to feel but they they don't really see what the market is telling them they think that 
this price action here, it's wrong. It shouldn't be there. Why? Because they think they want to achieve something and this price action doesn't fulfill my need to be here. So I'm not going to see it as the market information. I'm going to just, I select it to bypass it. Okay. So uh, I hope you get a very good understanding about this. I tried to make a, I comp actually I compressed this price action setups together within a webinar plus with the psychology because I wanted to uh, to to bend them together so you don't lose the um, the sequence of of your thought how to interpret it in our trading now now you know for sure and you have this uptrend bullish engulfing around support great criteria to enter we buy bearish engulfing or bearish pin bar at support we don't touch them and i'm sure that if you play around with this uh, with these setups guys and uh, you understand how traders they think and we have all these false signals and you start thinking the opposite way the the market's way i'm sure you're going to experience uh, great results guys before i leave you just to make sure that you you know about the webinars i do monday to friday so you have the opportunity to participate in the webinars i can share with you the screen and tell you exactly where to find them if you go to the website of admirals uh, you click here at education forex and cfd webinars in case you didn't see them, start the day, start the trading day with Theo. I'll just copy the link so it's easier for you to register. And also you can find them recording on, uh, on YouTube. And please make sure you remember to the analytics, pre, the weekly trading podcast, so you can listen to the podcast or you can download it on your device. All right, guys, I would like to really thank you so much for taking the time to participate in this webinar. Um, I appreciate also uh, the effort and your questions here. Uh, I would, it will be a pleasure to see you if you're not already on the live uh, trading sessions in the morning, if your time schedule allows you. And also, please make sure you engage with the, with the podcast because that's going to give you uh, a solid fundamental understanding without you need to spend hours and hours um, just to see where the news are, what news they are now, and how to explain them and all this stuff. I do all the, the hard work for you, and uh, and my it's my pleasure to just uh, give them to you. We don't charge for this, <laughs> nothing, okay? So please make sure when I finish the webinar, you put all your um, all your comments, feedback. I would like to read your feedbacks, really. And uh, I wish you to have a great day wherever you are in the world. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.